Hello. Welcome to our webinar Wednesdays here with Orion Welders and Sunstone Welders. Um, as we said from the beginning, once a month we're going to do something kind of uh, more in the industrial side of things. So today we're talking about thermocouples. Uh, thermocouples are really important because they're used in pretty much everything nowadays. You may not know this if you're watching. You may be like, what's a thermocouple? Well, uh, if you think about your thermostat at home, it has a thermocouple attached somewhere that, that allows uh, a system to know you know, when things get to a certain heat or a certain uh, temperature, right? So you set your thermostat at home. It says, uh, okay, I want you to turn off at uh, 72 degrees, when the house is 72 degrees, all right? So this thermocouple senses the 72 degrees and then it shuts your thermostat off. So anyways, thermocouples are in everything. Cars, uh, homes, offices, uh, all the technology we have today, your phones, everything. Thermocouples are used. So um, I'm going to just show you one right here. It's just a simple wire, okay? So you have, this is a type K thermocouple um, right here. You have two wires that come off. Uh, one is called uh, a lumal and the other is chromal. So it's uh, uh, nickel with aluminum and chrome with, a, uh, with nickel with aluminum and nickel with chrome, all right? So those types of metals are what are used to uh, uh, be able to have a reaction um, I have to cheat today because this isn't my expertise, but basically what happens, you have, you have a, these two wires, right? Um, it's two dissimilar metals, and what happens is they create a temperature-dependent voltage, all right? And that temperature-dependent voltage can be measured, and so when temperatures change, uh, you can set your thermocouple, or your systems to do what you want, right? And that can't be done unless you have a thermocouple. Well, we have to put these two together, and then we have to attach them to our substrate. So this is where the Orion system uh, has been awesome with thermocouple welding. Traditionally, uh, people would use resistance welders. You know, they put the wires together, they clamp them down. You have, uh, you know, step on a foot pedal or whatever, and it would, it would make the two wires come together. But then it was kind of difficult to attach them to the substrate. So with an Orion, you can put these two wires together and then also use the Orion to connect them to the substrate. And so it's very quick, uh, very easy, um, and it doesn't require much. I mean, this is a, the M-Pulse. It's one of our most basic units, but it can be done uh, with all types of thermocouples can be attached using this machine. So um, there's different types of thermocouples out there. And we just want you to know that with an Orion uh, pulse arc welding system, and also with our resistance welders, which we're not, we're not showing them today, but with our CD welders, um, you can do any type of thermocouple, all right? Uh, whether it's type K, type N, type E, type J, type T. Um, today we're going to do examples on a type, uh, a type K. And then I also have a type T. Okay, so we'll do examples on two different types here. Now, if you're not in the world of thermocouple welding uh, or anything like that, that's okay because this is a this is a good example of something to watch that you can do in any industry. Uh, a lot of times, you just have to put wires together um, with these machines and with our uh, sunstone welders. You know, the more uh, resistance type welders, um, we have a system for basically any type of wire, right? Uh, I've seen the guys in the lab weld uh, wires thinner than hair. Now, I've forgotten how thin hair is because I don't have any, but it's okay. There are a lot of people out there, you can rip a little piece of hair out and see how thin it is, and you'll be like, wow, that's crazy. It's actually thinner than hair, some of the wires I've seen. It's unbelievable. So you can weld, we have systems for anything, but <coughs> you can weld uh, wires together, you can attach them to substrates. PCB boards, anything you need out there. Um, so you don't have to stop watching just because you're not doing thermocouples. It's something that can be applied in any type of welding atmosphere, any type of welding application. So anyways, uh, I think 
I've kind of basically covered uh, the basics, so I'm going to show you how we do this. Um, put my little cheat sheet over here, okay? Um, oh, first, sorry. I'm sorry, yeah, Fang just reminded me. Uh, first, we want to show a video. Um, you can find this on our YouTube page, but we're going to show you right now an example of what, we're, of what you can do. So in the video, they welded the two wires together using the Pulsar technology. And that's what we're going to show here as well. So as you saw, it's, it's quick. It's very fast. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of time to have to make sure everything's positioned just perfectly. Um, these these Pulsar or Micro TIG welders, they've come a long way. Uh, if you ever researched them in the past, maybe they were a little finicky. Nowadays, they're very, they're awesome, okay? Uh, you can hold the wires very close. You can pinch them with your fingers and hold very close to where you're welding. And that weld, it happens so fast, and you're able to control the, the power so uh, precisely that it doesn't burn your fingertips. You, you can really just get in there close. You, you can look through a microscope if it's something really, really small. And, uh, and you can get a really uh, just accurate weld like that. Um, so it's awesome. It's, if, if you've done other example or if you've done other technologies to weld your thermocouples, I think you might find that this is a lot quicker and, and really cool. So let us show you, a, is the second video ready thing? Yep. Okay, we're going to show you a second video right here. Um, and we'll cut to that right now. So the previous video was using an MI cable. So the uh, the cable was actually the thermocouple was built inside of the cable. Um, this is uh, the next step after that is welded. We can then go through um, and hermetically seal uh, that same area. And you can see here done with and without filler well, uh, filler material. Uh, these were both done on the uh, laser welder, the LZR100. So I have a question for you, Thane. What we were just seeing, we'll come back here to me. Okay, so what we were just seeing in that video, uh, we showed an example using a pulse arc welder to put the uh, thermocouple wires together, and then we did the hermetic seal around uh, that tube, okay? We used a laser to do that hermetic seal. Could we use a pulse arc welder to do that as well? Absolutely. Okay. So you can use the pulse arc welder to do that same thing. That video we just showed you, we were using a laser welder, but you can use the, the pulse arc welder to put that seal around and to add metal around to make a, a hermetic seal. Uh, you can also use our lasers. We sell lasers as well. We'll do some laser training and webinars in the future, but you can use a laser or a pulse arc welder for everything you're seeing today. So, <coughs> All right. So... What do you say we start welding? Um, okay, so as I mentioned before, this is a type K uh, thermocouple. Um, as you can see, we ha we're very close up, okay? So that's, that's my pinky right there, all right? So you can see these wires are tiny. But like I said, I can hold my fingers really close, even though I'm welding on this electrode, I can hold my fingers really close, and I'm not going to feel a burn or anything like that. Um, I can hold it steady, it's quick, it's fast. Um, you know, if you have to do lots of thermocouples, it goes by, you can get them done really, really quickly. So, let's cut to the screen and see what uh, our power is at. So this is again, it's called the M-Pulse. And we're using the Impulse Plus so that I can use a microscope. Um, we have a system, just the traditional Impulse, where uh, they don't have a microscope, but we'll show you that in just a second. Now, this machine, I can go up to 30 watt seconds or all the way down to 3. And I did some tests earlier before the video, and we found that 5 watt seconds is a good power setting uh, to be able to do these welds. So, 
Let's cut back to the welding camera. And you have to ground one of the thermocouple wires like this. And that's connected to the, the impulse. And then what we're going to do is, uh, let's see here, I gotta reposition this so that we can make sure the camera sees everything well. Okay, so I switched cables, but that's fine. As long as one of them is grounded. And I don't think I'm blocking. Am I blocking thing? Nope, we can see. Alright, here we go. So you hold the two cables together and then just touch that electrode right on top. And I'm not holding them together very well, I'm sorry. Let me start over. Here we go. So just to kind of get a better weld, I'm going to just touch one on top. And here we go. Turn my power up just a little bit. Well, hold on. I'm a little shaky. There we go. Okay. I had to reposition my chair so I could get in a good spot here and clean those cables up. Okay, so I'm holding them close together. Touch right on top, and I need more power. This is a good example. <laughs> All right, let me try one more here. Power a little too high there. Let me clean this electrode up. There we go. There we go. Alright, that was embarrassing. Seriously, I gotta learn how to weld. Okay, so you can see right here on the video, you have those two cables. They're now welded together. And then what we do, we're gonna turn the power up just a little bit. And just for the sake of this video, we just have some stainless steel here that we're going to attach it to. You can do this to any type of metal. So you have your thermocouple. So your finger's in the way. Oh, my finger in the way. Sorry about that. So it's kind of hard here to make sure I stay on the on their camera. Here we go. the right power. Today we specifically chose the impulse. Um, it is our most simple unit and uh, it, it does also have a few features that uh, the other machines have features that would be more beneficial. What are some of those features then? So um, on this one particularly we could change to a standard ignition. And in the previous videos, we've talked about changing that over. This one does not have that option. And so one of the problems that it's having is that the arc is tending to jump to one side or the other. So there we have our thermocouple attached. And I could probably put a couple welds around it as I'm looking through the microscope. But for the sake of the video, we can see that there. There we 
we go. Alright. Now, so some other ones, you can leave that camera on there thing. So here you have some bigger, these wires are a little bit bigger than the last demonstration I showed. So what we would do, is we would actually just turn the power up a bit more. So I'm going to go to the 10 watt second range. And... You can see with a little bit more power, we can just go like that, and you get a good weld. A little bit easier with the bigger ones, I feel like. And then same thing, grab your substrate, and I'm going to turn the power up a little bit more. And then after a couple welds, do a little pull test. You can see that's really strong. Trying to pull that off. So you have a good good solid weld there, and that could be uh, how you attach your thermocouple. So those are type examples of type K. Um, here's an example of type T. Now as you can see with the type T, uh, you have a bunch of wires, uh, stranded wire. So there's a couple different things you can do. What I like to do is just ball the top. So I'm going to take my power back to 10 watt seconds and kind of make a ball here so that we can easily fasten that together. So I did the one side. Now I'm going to turn my power up because I see that I could do it in one shot rather than a whole bunch if we do a little bit more power like that. So that's a really good example there. Now, we can just put the two together. And again, we have some bigger... Uh, at the end of those wires, there's a bigger ball, so what we're going to do is turn the power up a little bit so we can put that together in just one shot. And there we have it. So there you see that that's together. And then again, you could just easily weld that to your substrate. So that's a type T. And the other two were type K. And as you can see, it's done really easy. Again, like Thane said, this is our, our most simple machine. Um, so like Thane said, this is the impulse is our most basic machine. Uh, you can get it with the microscope, which, as you can see, I was struggling at the beginning with that really small wire, so a microscope comes in handy. Or you can get with like a little auto darkening lens. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that that way just because it's nice to have the microscope so you can see that and have your eyes protected. But thermocouple welding, like you said, like we said, it's used in every industry. Uh, these machines make it simple, fast, easy to do. Uh, you can get those thermal couples done quickly, attach them to the substrate, all with the same machine, all done in seconds. And, uh, and like I said, you can, uh, it's perfect because it's made for, you know, you can combine dissimilar metals, which thermal couples are, and uh, it gives you a good solid weld. So, I think that's it for our show today. It's very simple, but we wanted to let everybody know out there, thermal couple welding with a pulse arc welder is fast and easy to do. Um, did we have any questions today, Thane? No questions. No questions today. All right. We'll catch you next Wednesday. Thanks for joining us.